Hi everyone, in this video we're going to focus on how to interpret confidence intervals for two proportions. So we're going to be looking at confidence intervals for two proportions. So for P1 comma P2. So the way that a confidence interval is constructed for two proportions is really, really interesting. So the intervals are created for the difference. So basically you take one population proportion and you subtract the other population proportion. Okay. So the interval is created for P1 minus P2. So this guy here is a population proportion and then this one here is a population proportion. Just to give everything some context and the examples that follow, let's make up some population proportions. Let's say that P1 is the proportion of all men who like cats. And let's say P2 is the same thing except it's women who like cats. Okay, so let's look at the three possibilities. So if the confidence interval, I'll just say CI, contains, so there's three cases. So the first case would be the case where you only have positive values in your confidence interval. So positive values. Okay, positive values. So let me make up a, a fake example. So let's say you do the problem, you're using software, StatCrunch or Excel or whatever, and the answer you get is 0.24 comma 0.47. So that's your confidence interval. Say it's a 95% confidence interval, just for clarity, for P1 minus P2. So what would that mean? So that would mean that P1 minus P2 is between 0.24 and 0.47 with, say, 95% confidence, right? So that really has no meaning, not yet. So let's think of a picture. So here's 0.24, and then here's 0.47. So we're saying that P1 minus P2 is somewhere here. It's some number in this interval, in this open interval. So if it's some number here, in particular, P1 minus P2 has to be a positive number. So positive in mathematics means greater than zero. Ah, but what does that mean? That means that P1 is bigger than P2. So that's it. If you have only positive values in your confidence interval, your first proportion is bigger than your second proportion. So in our fake example, the proportion of all men who like cats is bigger than the proportion of all women who like cats. So if we have only positive values, we know more men than women like cats. Two, let's say that you get only negative values. So negative values. And again, we'll assume it's 95%. And say the answer we get is negative 0.4 uh, comma negative 0.1. That would mean that P1 minus P2 is between these numbers. So P1 minus P2 is between negative 0.4 and negative 0.1. Right? So P1 minus P2 is between these numbers. Okay. Let's draw another picture again so you see it. So here's our picture for this case. Okay. So here is negative 0.4. And here is negative 0.1. And so as before, this is an open interval. That means the endpoints are included. And we would know P1 minus P2 is between these two numbers, so maybe it's here. So what would that mean? Well, that means that P1 minus P2 is less than 0 because it's negative. So what does that mean? That means that implies that P1 is less than P2. So in this case, if you have only negative values, your first proportion is smaller. So the proportion of all men who like cats is less than the proportion of all women who like cats. It's really easy to memorize. Positive, greater, positive, greater, positive, greater, ne negative, less than, negative. So it's really simple. Positive numbers only, the first proportion is bigger. 
negative numbers only, the first proportion is smaller. Then we have one more case, so three. If you have both, if you have both positive and negative values, say you have both, a fake example, say you get negative 0.2 comma 0.7. That means P1 minus P2 is between these numbers. So P1 minus P2 is between negative 0.2 and 0.7 with, say, 95% confidence. So what does the picture look like this time? Let me draw it again. So I'll do it over here. So here's negative 0.2 and here's 0.7. Well, in this case, P1 minus P2, it could be negative, right? It could be over here. It could be positive. So it could be that P1 minus P2 is negative, in which case the first proportion is smaller. It could be that it's positive, in which case the first proportion is bigger. So we don't really know. And in fact, it could be that it's equal to zero. So it could be, it could be that it's probably not going to happen, but it could happen. It could be that it's equal to zero. So it could be that they're the same. So in particular, what does this mean? This means that we can't say they're different. So if you have both positive and negative values, you can't say they're different. Can't say they differ. That's the conclusion, right? You cannot say they are different because they could be the same. So a recap, if you have only, let me use a different color, let's see, so. If you have only positive values, right? Like this example here. That would mean that your first proportion is bigger. If you have only negative values, like this example here, that means your first proportion is smaller. And if you have both positive and negative values, right, well, what does that mean? Well, it could be bigger, it could be smaller, and it could be even equal to zero. So in that case, they could be the same. So you can't say they are different. Okay, so positive values, the first one's bigger. Negative values, the first one's smaller. Both positive and negative, no information. You can't say they're different. In both of these cases here, in both of these cases here, something special happens. The confidence interval does not contain zero. So if you have positive values only or negative values only, it does not contain zero. And what does that mean? Well, it depends. Positive means it's bigger. Negative means it's smaller, right? But in either case, you can say they're different. So if your confidence interval does not contain zero, you can say they differ. Can say they differ. So another way to think about it. And if it contains zero, right? T to say it contains both positive and negative values means that it contains zero, and that would mean that you can't say they're different. So sometimes people think of it another way. They memorize it like this. Confidence interval does not contain zero, can say they're different. Does contain zero, can't say they're different. I personally don't like that. <laughs> I like to break it down further. Positive values only, bigger, negative, smaller, both positive and negative, can't say they're different. So I hope this video has made sense and I hope it's helped. Um, that's it.